Welcome to Bariatric Business Accelerator, the podcast created for busy weight loss practitioners and their teams who want to systematize, simplify, and accelerate the growth of their new or existing weight loss practice. I'm your host, Carol Clark, and we are talking finances today. We are talking about how to interpret your financial reports and whether you are a solo practitioner someone who is in a group, a large multi-specialty group, or part of a large health system, you must know your numbers. This is something that you can't delegate exclusively to somebody else. And I know sometimes it can be a touchy topic, but the more you understand and know how to interpret your financial reports every month, the better off you will be for positioning yourself for profitability and for uh, stability and for less chaos and a little bit more calm in your practice because you've got to know your numbers in order order to make uh, educated decisions moving forward and it's something that has to be embraced. And this is something I do on a regular basis monthly with people who are in my membership. They'll send me their reports. We'll go through them together. Uh, and we do this for many different practices and it is an eye opener for some, a breath of fresh air because they finally understand the numbers and they finally know what's going on in their practice. And it's also a great way to overcome some of those feelings during really uh, challenging times right now with uh, whether you want to say we're in a recession or an impending recession. Uh, many of us have been in the trenches for over 20 years. I've gone through a number of recessions, but it is something that has to be managed. And knowing your numbers is a great way to feel confident about that or more confident about that. So like I say, no matter your situation, you've got to have your numbers. So here's what you need to do when it comes time for interpreting your reports. Number one, you've got to have the reports. So you want to be able to gather those reports. I have deadlines for all of my team members and uh, me for practices that I help with their numbers or for them to get them to me by the 10th of the following month. Most practices, they happen to be by the second of the month if it's not a weekend. And they're excited to go through those because they want to see what those numbers are showing. But anyhow, I use that as sort of a guide by the 10th of the month. And then it's a matter of sitting down and analyzing the report. So gather those reports. At the very least, you want to have a profit and loss statement for your entire practice. And then you want to divvy that up or have it behind the scenes, depending on what software you're using, split out by cost center, which could be revenue streams, whether you do retail sales, aesthetics, weight loss, medical, and surgical. You can do it that way, or you can do it by practitioner. We want to make sure our practitioners are covering their cost and bringing in that profit. We can oftentimes use that as an incentive for uh, payment and that sort of thing as well. So we want to have our profit and loss statement. We want to see it as a snapshot for the entire practice, and we want it divided out by cost center. Then I also like to take those numbers and I like to have them on a snapshot, which shows me what last year was and then this entire year in one spreadsheet. I like to see that because that will help with trends. So that's something that I do require. Now, from a financial perspective, there are other reports that I gather, but this is the main one for that whole cash flow, financial stability of your practice. Uh, we'll get into some of the other ones, things like your accounts receivable, if you're taking insurance, um, some of those sorts of things, your, uh, you know, your cash flow, your balance statement. But right now we're focusing on your profit and loss. So we have that. We want to take a look at it and we want to analyze your profitability. Are you showing a profit? If you are, what cost centers tend to be doing really well? Which ones perhaps aren't? Um, we want to take a look at that. And then we also want to uh, take a look at uh, if, if you're profitable, that's awesome. We want to make sure that you're also saving some for uh, some of those uh, times you need to reinvest or depending on how your corporation is set up, if you needed additional monies for taxes or things that are coming up. But we take a look at that income statement by cost center. We take a look at your profitability and then we dive into separating out your revenue versus your expenses. Anytime you have a profit or a loss, you've got to take a peek at where is most of your money coming from and where is most of your money going? Now, honestly, your uh, payroll is a big part of that. Healthcare is a big part of that malpractice, uh, overhead, depending on if you own your building or what sort of space you're in. But we've got to take a look at your expenses because if you're operating at a loss or you're not having much profit, we're going to have to make some adjustments. So that's when we actually will be doing that. 
hopefully you have a budget that you've created for this year. So uh, I also like to take a peek at it compared to what you budgeted. Where are the differences from what you budgeted to what the difference is? And is that reasonable? Is it something that was expected? Is it unexpected? Has a contract that you have all, all of a sudden gone up? So we want to make sure that we're looking at that. So we take a look at your um, budget if you have it. Uh, at the very least, we want to make sure we're looking at that profitability like I talked about. Um, I also like to, if your our, our revenue is off a little bit, we want to look at accounts receivable. Where is there a billing issue going on? Uh, of course, we're always concerned. We want to make sure that we have an eye out and, and uh, checks and balances in place to prevent any sort of um, anyone, you know, skimming off any money, anything like that. Um, but we want to make a look, take a look at that. Uh, once we see all this, we'll take it into consideration. We'll decide if there's changes that need to be made. And we go back to our key performance indicators for all of our different departments and team members. Uh, that's the other thing in addition to your AR you, you could be looking at. So uh, we that's totally a separate conversation. But for key performance indicators, I like to get those numbers for whatever it is they're measuring on a weekly basis. Some people even promote daily. I don't. I usually do weekly weekly key performance indicators for my team. That could be something as simple as total number of new consults scheduled, how many leads were coming in, what my sales were in our retail store. Are they meeting uh, what it is that we want in order to meet our goal. So it all plays into this big picture. Um, so that's how we uh, do that. We're getting into a big planning period for 2024, uh, depending on when you're watching this, but this is going to be a big topic. So for preparation for that, I've got lots of tools in order to, for you to be able to prepare for that, set your goals, break it down into uh, quarterly, monthly, weekly, uh, and turn into KPIs. And then you've got everything set to then measure as you go through those months. It helps prevent surprises. It helps you always keep your finger on the pulse. The snapshot that I mentioned helps you see trends. And all of these numbers play together into your um your profitability and your stability. And they're always gonna be important even for down the road, if you're looking to eventually sell your practice or if you're a part of a larger health system and they're looking at where resources are gonna be allocated, we've gotta make sure that we know our numbers. So I hope this has been helpful. I just finished an entire four week course on this. We'll have the link below if you wanted to participate in that. It's all there for you. It's a very low, 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 low cost for what you get. It's got your tools, uh, the education to go along with it. I'm always available for a call. You can schedule a call with me through my website, weightlosspracticebuilder.com. Also more free resources for you there. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast, please do so. And I, uh, I'm excited for you. I know many of you already know all your numbers and I can tell as soon as I talk to somebody uh, if they feel confident about them or not. And this is something that we've got to have a handle on, have to be confident about. And of course, one step that I didn't mention is having a professional team to help you with the interpretation, having your accountant who's taking a look at it and having your financial planner in terms of retirement, all of that. And of course, I um, do that for many practices as well as uh, just in terms of taking a look at their numbers and that sort of thing. So I hope you have a great day that you know your numbers. And if you don't, don't worry. This is a great start to know your numbers so that you have more confidence in the future of your practice and also the profitability and everything that goes along with that. Take care.